Hello, I'm Michael Kavistad. I'm a lawyer here at Beresford Booth, and I practice in the business and real estate group. I practice mostly in uh, cor with corporations, businesses, and real estate. On the business side, I uh, help with uh, buying and selling businesses, setting them up, uh, and also on the real estate side, some of the stuff I do includes buying and selling real estate. And so today I want to talk about what is asset protection, as it says there, how to safeguard your real estate from claims, lawsuits, and other losses. And the reason why I say real estate is because I'm really, this is aimed at a real estate investor, someone who owns maybe multiple real estates. Um, the, stuff, the information uh, on insurance will be applicable to most people or many people, but the information that I'll talk about with LLCs to help protect your assets is uh, more applicable to those who own multiple real estate uh, holdings. All right, as it's shown here, uh, we're going to cover asset protection methods and how they can be utilized uh, for to, to help you and your family. Some common methods are insurance and LLCs. Those are the two I'm going to talk about. There are also uh, prenuptial agreements and some anti uh, postnuptial agreements that can help uh, and uh, in trusts as well. The advantage uh, to an LLC over uh, especially a trust is you maintain total control uh, and you can make decisions on, on business decisions, raising rent, selling whatnot to yourself. Uh, and uh, insurance is applicable to all. And I'll start with insurance and we'll move to LLCs. All right, insurance, as I say here, is the first line of defense when it comes to any claims that may come against you. When discussing claims uh, and issues that can pop up, I'm going to talk about uh, an example, the same example, and that is you own your house, you've got maybe a couple cars, maybe a, a boat, and you own two commercial properties that are rentals, as well as an apartment complex. And that's going to be our example moving forward, looking at uh, both uh, property coverage and liability coverage with insurance and when we're talking LLCs. And as you can see here, there's 12 different types of insurance here, and they're all kind of packages of the same uh, two or three things. And those are the, the last three I'll talk about. Liability insurance on one hand and property insurance on the other. And those cover uh, basically all our needs as an insured uh, individual or business, uh, but there are different ways of, um, of packaging them by the insurance companies. I'll start first with landlord insurance. Landlord insurance is geared towards commercial landlords uh, and residential, and it um, protects both the, the structure, the home, the building, uh, and provides limited and provides liability coverage. So it's kind of a two in one geared towards landlords and aimed towards the risks that landlords face. Uh, dwelling insurance is uh, just for just for the building itself. And that's relatively, I don't want to say common, but uh, that's a coverage that, that a lot of people have when you just have the, the building itself. That's a property cover property insurance coverage. Uh, vacant property insurance is uh, an interesting one, I think, because when it comes to vacant properties, uh, they're at more risk for broken pipes and vandalism. Um, so they're just it's more expensive than standard insurance. Uh, I know I've come home to having a having a broken pipe, having a leak, and I've had to fix it right away and it prevented damage in a vacant home, however, or even one that's left out, uh, you know, uh, a snowbird type of situation and left on its own for a while. Um, if a water heater breaks, for instance, that can cause major damage to to the to the residents. And um, a lot of insurance coverages, like homeowners insurance or general uh, commercial property insurance, don't cover um, losses when the property is uh, vacant. Uh, they require you to get vacant property insurance, which is more expensive. Uh, flood insurance uh, is a real popular, uh, very well known insurance coverage. 
It's not part of normal homeowners insurance or commercial property insurance. It's extra. It can be purchased uh, privately or through the National uh, Flood Insurance Program and uh, is something certainly necessary to flood protection to protect your assets. Uh, similarly, earthquake insurance falls in that same category where it's extra insurance on top of your regular insurance and is uh, covers just certain aspects, certain losses, which is damage to an earthquake. And of course, earthquakes happen around here and no one's immune from those. And earthquake insurance is something that can help protect in the event of an, a loss from an earthquake. Business uh, interruption insurance is a uh, interesting one for uh, businesses because if they are subject to a um, loss uh, due to a fire, suppose th uh, this business makes um, uh, clothing here in Snohomish County and a fire burns 50% uh, of their manufacturing area and so they're going to lose their income that business interruption can come in and help pay salaries pay bills while they rebuild and get back to full capacity builders risk insurance is an important one for real estate investors uh, especially if they're doing the building and it covers uh, various risks that builders are subject to including theft vandalism weather damage uh, and it covers a lot of equipment and tools depending on the policy which is something uh, of course important to um, developers uh, title insurance is near and dear to my heart um, and it's very applicable to anyone who buys or sells real uh, really buys real estate uh, it covers um, well the two main issues I really recommend it for is um although it's part of the buying process and is kind of i don't want to say overlooked but just it's very commonplace so not a lot of attention is paid to title insurance it's really important for two reasons and the first is it guarantees that it guarantees who owns the property and so that way you can verify if the seller is actually the right party that is selling the property and I don't mean that from a nefarious standpoint, but just in the event that sometimes properties that's been in the family for a long time, you know, 50 years ago when it was purchased, maybe the deed was never recorded. That, ha that has happened. And um, so 50 years later, it looks like the seller from, you know, 1972 was the one that uh, still owns the property. And you got to go through a lawsuit to figure that out. Well, it's better figuring that out before you buy the property make the seller do it <laughs> than when you uh then after you purchase it you find out a surprise when you maybe finance uh the other issue that in uh, title insurance really helps with is um easements um easements usually aren't much of a much of an issue for people but they can really rear an ugly head um in certain circumstances I've seen easements that allow um, foot and vehicle traffic just a little too close to the existing building. And an easement, by the way, is something that benefits, is a right of way, generally, a right of way that benefits a neighbor to cross your property. And I've seen them where they cross a little too close to a commercial property, uh, or even they've gone through a building before. And the most common way that I've seen with, especially commercial properties, is easements for parking where parking spaces are an issue in parking lots and they can, um, um, and giving that knowledge ahead of time will, will let you know what spaces you have rights to. And uh, so then moving on to short-term rentals, these are relatively, it's relatively newer insurance because of Airbnbs and VRBOs and other short-term rentals that uh, maybe you've seen in the news for uh, where cities kind of clamp down on them or communities. Well, in any event, the insurance industry has uh, looked at short-term rentals and said, you know, when there's a lot of guests that go through a place, there's certain protections that, that owners need. Uh, so they have guest liability insurance. So if a guest gets injured on your property, they'll cover that. They'll also cover if you get sued, if a guest accidentally damages someone else's property. Sometimes that's included in that short-term rental insurance. Uh, and they also cover property insurance if um, a guest damages part of your building. And also, um, there's limits to it, but also theft and burglary if some of your stuff is stolen. Now, it doesn't cover, uh, I guess, um, goods that are stolen, their property, uh, or any intentional damage. But it is it is applicable to a lot of real estate investors who own short-term rentals. Uh, now I get to the, the big three, the big kahunas here. Um, general liability insurance 
is, whoops, pardon me. Let's, let's get to that slide for you. Um, general liability insurance. <laughs> There we go. General liability insurance here, which it shows claims of bodily injury, property damage, and what's personal injury, which is defamation. So it's not something that happens too often. But general liability insurance is critical uh, to risk management for real estate investors, uh, really businesses and individuals as well. It can provide uh, financial protection and peace of mind in the event the worst happens. Go back to my example of um owning a house a uh, couple vehicles and a boat to commercial properties and an apartment complex suppose the apartment complex uh, a deck falls and people get injured well and there's major losses of uh, uh major losses that they that they've been exposed to and they want, to, want compensation from you well general liability insurance kicks in for that type of liability and covers you from unforeseen accidents uh, as well as of course fire and those sorts of typical insurance losses. Um, and it also covers, I should mention, like slip and fall accidents that are relatively common at a lot of commercial places. Um, it also covers uh, damage caused by business operations. If you, and of course you're doing your business, you you cause damage to someone's property, not an auto accident, that's covered by auto insurance, but other, other sorts of issues. Um, and it can also cover the cost if you're sued for the legal defense, your attorney's fees, um, and um, will pay for the settlements of those claims and or any court ordered amounts that have to be paid. And it's, um, you know, there's unexpected events that can be a, a real lifeline for people and, and businesses, especially. Um, and it also covers, um, or pardon me, it does not cover um, professional negligence like malpractice for you know physicians doesn't cover that uh liability it is uh limited to uh, what's in the policy but negligence for professionals is always a separate coverage all right next up commercial property insurance um this is in the things of what we think of as losses by by fire lightning wind just unexpected losses to your property as opposed to um, your own liability for something with a deck fall. So by the way, when I mentioned the deck, the deck falling to, due to your liability, um, the, the presupposition of that is that you knew that the deck was had a problem and uh, you should have fixed it and didn't and it fell. So there, there's, a, there's some sort of relation to your knowing and your liability for it falling as opposed to it just being a, um, a property damage such as due to fire or lightning. All right, back to commercial property insurance. Uh, theft and vandalism are also covered by this. And it covers buildings. Um, I think also, interestingly enough, outdoor fixtures. A lot of homeowners insurance doesn't cover that, um, such as fences, gates, signs. Uh, covers various personal property, equipment, furniture. So if you've got a business, covers a lot of your, your belongings. Uh, but if you just invest and you rent, uh, it'll cover what's in your storage closet, I suppose, too. Uh, umbrella insurance is. Uh, a fantastic additional insurance. Think of an umbrella covering, you know, providing comfort in a rainstorm. Uh, it does that in the insurance, just knowing you've got this extra insurance. Basically what it is, it's an additional layer of security. And it's much less expensive than regular liability insurance, but it goes on top of your liability insurance. You get liability, you get this on top of it, it's extra. And, um, you know, you can get two, three million dollars of insurance for not much uh, money uh, in terms of premiums, but it adds on to your insurance. So suppose we go back to that apartment complex and the deck falls and there's three million dollars of losses, but you only have two million dollars of insurance on your um, apartment complex. If you have umbrella insurance for your commercial properties, it'll add on that extra two or three million dollars. And so you have plenty of coverage in that circumstance. So it just adds on extra insurance for you and can be, um, you know, I mentioned earlier kind of peace of mind with asset protection. Um, umbrella insurance, both in personal and in the business context can provide great peace of mind because it's that much more insurance coverage for not much more money. All right, uh, now I wanna move on to LLCs, which uh, I only have one slide for, but they quite frankly are just as important as insurance in protecting your assets. 
Uh, they LLCs are separate entities from you yourself, uh, kind of like a corporation. They're they're different from a corporation, but they're like a corporation where they're a separate entity. And LLCs, unlike a corporation, are pretty easy to manage. Uh, you have to file an annual report. You have to have separate books, um, separate accounting, uh, separate bank accounts from you yourself personally, and they got to be personal or I shouldn't say personal, they got to be separate and just for that LLC. Um, and once they're established and if they're maintained in the proper course, which isn't too hard and, you know, a lawyer can always help you with that here at Barrister Booth, um, but they can be, um, uh, you can have an LLC for each one of your commercial properties. So if we go back to our example with that apartment complex, suppose um, it's underinsured and the owner, pardon me, the, the people who suffered the loss from falling, suffered the injuries, um, and your insurance doesn't cover them and they, they expect to get paid, say, $2 million more. Well, they could always go and try and go after that apartment house and sell it or over your other commercial properties or, frankly, your home or your, your vehicles and um, your boat. And they can do that. Um, but if you have an LLC for that apartment complex, the farthest they can reach is that apartment complex. They can't go get other assets because they're separated through that LLC. It's a separate entity. And the entity that's responsible for the injuries, your LLC, is not the same entity that covers the commercial properties. And it's not you yourself. So they can only go to the assets of that one LLC if they're pursuing a loss on that apartment complex. And you can get them for all three, and the rec I definitely recommend getting them for all your investment properties because um, if there's a loss in one property, the 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 the, the farthest extent, furthest extent, uh, they can pursue those assets. It are the assets of that LLC. So if you had one LLC for all three properties, they could go after any of the three properties. But if you have one for each property, they can only go after that single property, and that's just better protection for your assets. Um, I mentioned down below here, can use for second homes. Certainly, they're great for that. They separate, that way it's separate from your personal house. And there's more liability with a second home that you rent, certainly. So it, it, it decreases the risk to yourself. Investment properties, business assets, we talked about those. But also uh, personal residence. Uh, in California, they're used um, by a lot of celebrities. Even though in California, LLCs are supposed to be for a business purpose, they're still allowed and they're used to uh, keep the owner private. Um, and they can be used uh, in Washington as well. There's a couple issues with, with doing that. Um, you lose what's called the homestead exemption. So um, if you're sued and someone tries to sell your house, you're allowed what's called a homestead, which is in Snohomish County about 700, the first $700,000 of the sale goes to you personally, and you lose that with an LLC. So if someone were to sell your house um, uh, to collect some money, um, there, you wouldn't have that protection of that first roughly $700,000 going to you. Um, and then property insurance can be more expensive for an LLC. And also with financing, um, your mortgage company, um, you typically need permission from your mortgage company, and that's hard to get because it's technically a default on your mortgage if you transfer your house to an LLC. And if you and if you buy your house as an LLC from the get-go, the mortgage company would certainly make you personally guarantee it anyhow. So in any event, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something about um, asset protection. If you have any questions, please give me a call or send me an email. I'll be happy to chat with you about uh, asset protection or frankly, anything related to um, corporations or business law and real estate. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.